Not even gonna try. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Yo, what's up, crew? How you guys doing today? It's good to see you. You know, welcome to the Stanley Parable. Today we're just gonna hang out, chill, chat, and uh, just play this game. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, I guess we'll go do that. We'll go admire the employee lounge, I suppose. Uh, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. <laughs> Stanley's but eager to get back to business, Stanley yeah, it's pretty took funny the first already. open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I mean, that's a fact, though. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you or what? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. I'll give you a chance, I suppose. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see, there's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. 
a third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical we feedback give it a, here. A one. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's <laughs> not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. What is going on here? Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it I'm some play I'm just being obnoxious, I guess. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very I'm not going to do anything. Game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Now I'm gonna try. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <coughs> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Aha! Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems yeah, obvious so what's going to on me that you are meant to play as a creepy man, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Okay, sure. Oh, no. No, 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 it can't be. What? What's going on? It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. Well, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You nearly wandered off into that, that thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh thank heavens we <laughs> avoided it. Well, yeah, the narrator doesn't like me so far. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> oh, we're in Rocket League. Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Now this is Rocket League. If you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Yeah, let's go make a goal. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. 
Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Oh, okay. That's kind of sweet. Goal. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Yes. Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm I going suppose. to try out. Here comes another ball. Yes. Oh, goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls! Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> this is wild. I'm already really liking this game. Are you enjoying this, Stanley? Are you having fun? Yes, is I am having fun. Thank you, sir. Game? Well, I sure hope you're having a good time, because guess what? It's over. What? That's right. Your little fun comes to an end. This is my game, and what That's I not fair. say goes. Now I'm not you having get to fun. Have fun when I... Hold on. What are you doing? Yeah, this is nuts, isn't it, Bricks? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't... Yeah, did I just break out the that. game? Stanley, come back. What is happening? I can't see. Oh. Maybe that's because uh, this is the Ultra Deluxe version. Maybe that's why. It has like more content in it, I guess. I don't know. I've never played the original, so I have no idea. I don't know what the hell is happening right now. What's going on? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end. To make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. Okay. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close... Then I'll be back. Well, I'm back at the beginning of the game. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley right, well, decided I to, listen to go to this guy's time. Room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, I think Yet for this, we'll just do all the things that he tells us to either. do. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Just couldn't do admitting it. Admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. Uh, that's when a circle. It made any logical sense. I think it's going to be a loop. Yeah, I think this, it is. He began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. 
This is all a dream. Is it? Oh, Am I dreaming? Leaf Stanley felt. This is a fever dream. Finally found an answer. An explanation. This is a weird part yet. Yeah, his co-workers weird. weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then oh, he imagined floating. himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me Thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay, then. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Uh, right here, boom. Stanley decided to go it. up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. And then why just standing here for a few? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no just path there, okay. to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Yes. Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said so. Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me, because literally, this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would oh, have no, that's not convincing, my guy. I don't believe you. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. It is. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending. Are you is trolling me, Brick? <laughs> I hope your friends find is that what this is? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> what? Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Yeah, that's what happened. Like exactly. This, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby. Not a scam. So Are you sure? <laughs> that your body is taken care of before it begins you guys to trolling me right now? Those. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. 
they have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's what? indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming. Yeah, this so is nice. the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. All right. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can... You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Okay, yeah, I think he's done. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious, though, not gonna lie. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. What could it mean? He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random <laughs> buttons... Oh, he just keypad, tells me the code. <laughs> Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Okay. Yeah, this game's a riot, though. I'm loving this, like, already. A lot of fun. Very strange, but that's why I like it. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now? when for years it had never occurred to him. This question would not go unanswered for long. Jeez. But I hope you guys are enjoying the stream so far. You know, I really appreciate you guys hanging out today. Uh, if you guys haven't yet, please do hit that like button and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength? Is there to actually find a out? secret? Or is he lying to me? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, the Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And this reminds Stanley, me of the Matrix. Of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible all these people, to believe too fired. it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated reminds you of to accept for some reason? it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world i mean probably i am pretty blind in general but here was the proof the heart of the operation controls labeled with emotions happy or sad or content. this part definitely reminds you of portal working, eating working all of it monitored and commanded from this very place 
And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible... blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And I yet, doubt that. <laughs> even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other this mysteries the part right did here? this strange building hold? Uh, that reminds me of Portal. sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps this probably isn't real. the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze. Skybox reminds you of Goat Simulator. <laughs> the feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Is that it, really? Wait, the Stanley pair? That was super short. I know there's a ton of different endings and stuff, so there's still a lot more we could do. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off Yeet. on the wrong... But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Nice. It looks like we got a different room. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not sure. But again, I hope you guys are enjoying so far. I uh, thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate you guys. Someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. You open this? To put your work oh. aside. To let her back into your life. Ooh. She's been waiting. Talk about my missus? She's not even here now, dude. I don't know what this guy's talking about. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one. Is my missus calling? Tell me to get off the damn live streams. Jeez, that is bright. Flashbang out. Oh, he's talking about a mannequin. Is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Get your damn bread. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? No. They want to commit their life to you. <laughs> I'm trying to make I don't a deserve point here, one. Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. I kid, I kid. Come inside. You shout out to my missus. What's really going on here? Sorry, but you're in my story now. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stan.
Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now I'm not eating lunch. I already had lunch. Home. Now that doesn't know what he's, he's talking about. To work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this <laughs> life. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own my TV. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Press B to spend time with the boys. <laughs> so he went That's further. a great prompt right there. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought <laughs> that his decisions would mean something was almost too was wonderful a nut job. to behold. Stanley Parable's a fever dream? It seems to be that way, honestly. As he <laughs> wandered through this fantasy world, <laughs> He began to fill it with many possible Smashing paths that B -button and web. destinations. Spent time with the boys. Down one path <laughs> lay an enormous round room with That's monitors the crew. and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. I tell my kid's story? I don't have a kid. I have two cats. It was you guys want to hear that story, I guess. Fantasy. <laughs> and so in his head, he relived it again. And then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. That meta. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That no? as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. <laughs> you can ignore him. Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? Oh, it's putting me back to the beginning. How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. <laughs> I'll try once more to convey this great. to him. I'm compelled to. I must. I can't believe I haven't played this Perhaps. sooner. Well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Oh, did I die? I think I just RIP'd myself. Where's 430? We'll try that one real quick. Oh, please. Are you really okay, just it's 4.30. The achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I, I definitely clicked it over 20 times. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly. Oh my god, my arm's getting tired. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be oh my god. a true reward. <laughs> my arm's going to fall off by the time this is over. Hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? 417? Where's that? There it is. Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 43. Excellent. 
I think we're getting somewhere. Now door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. 415? Okay. Now, back to door number 437. Bro, really? <laughs> what is happening? Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. All right. Back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay. Now go climb on employee 419's desk. I can't. I can't jump. Yes! This oh, is okay. great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. 416? We've almost got it! Now the copy machine. Do that one again! <laughs> this is nuts. This guy's a madman. Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Yes! We did it! Oh, wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, Gee, geez, I guess. a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? I don't know. I guess I wasn't thinking. All right, so now what? Do I just take a left one again? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you. What? Really? Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked <clears throat> through Excuse the me. red door. Sure, okay. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? Oh, just, this is a circle. I wanted to stop. I can loop I again. Would, we would both be so much happier if we just stopped. And I think, well, I think I have a solution here. Let me show you. Yeet. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm. What? I actually feel happy. <laughs> going on very cool looking now no wait where are you going right, there's a content warning up there again just uh, so you guys know in case oh no Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. No! Oh, thank God. You I'm invisible. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, no. No, no, what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? One more time. Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? No. My God, is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? Eat. Well, maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know. Anymore. How many times I gotta do that? I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. 
Yeah, yeah a little bit, my guy. I'm sorry. Choice after all. Well, this one is your. Cowbunga. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. Yeah, he was not too happy about that. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? We got some new content here. Hopefully something exciting. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. That's cute. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. That's pretty funny. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Yay. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Watch, it's gonna be a troll and it's gonna be like nothing. We're going to the new content. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. Oh, okay. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Mostly tedious. It's as if them... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. Yeah, give me the content. All right, the jump circle. Yay, more content. <laughs> and if I keep jumping, things will keep happening. Pretty sure. I can't jump anymore? Why? All right, I guess I need the bucket for that. Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? Yes. If this is new content, this is very I exciting. Could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And it. Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. <laughs> I knew. There is getting impatient, just like I am. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no <laughs> reason other than to make an easy dollar. And I mean, that's true. started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended. And I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Is that actually <sighs> one of the achievements? It's my fault, Test Stanley. achievement? I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game? And we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks, just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Do we ignore him on that? Oh, never mind. I don't get a choice in the matter. 
Oh, we're in a completely different spot. All right. This is different. Psst. Stanley, come over here. In the vent. I want to show you something. Can I do it? Can I go in the vent? Or should I just ignore him? Oh. You don't want to see the cool surprise I made? Well, f oh. Never mind. You're not a dog. I guess we'll go check it out, right? Really hope you guys are enjoying as well. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about... Yeah, that's what it seems like, Bricks. There's no real end, Stanley I guess. Used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Excuse me. Just our little secret. Take a look. I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences cool. like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was solid with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. It's a Steam back page then, for it. It all meant something. Oh, the waste. Final achievement. It's impossible to get this achievement. Go outside. Don't play for five years. <laughs> Some wild achievements. What is this? Oh, it's a poor little hamster. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. Turn right, out little Stanley. From That's a fact. .com. <laughs> James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, We're so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art. Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, <laughs> it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. <laughs> an hour of new elevator content. <laughs> Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone <laughs> to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. Oh, Let's go find these them. were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. You don't? What's Let's this? go. What's I'm going to check it out then. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online <laughs> video Steam game Steam reviews. I haven't looked at these Oh, if you can years. find them, you got to find them. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and <laughs> dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! 
I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? True, it can Stanley, be at times. <laughs> I'm not preachy, am I? You wouldn't tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did. But maybe it wasn't. Dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my <laughs> otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, this and it's trippy. always been my motto. I'd do this anything whole game. for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Anything behind this? Nothing. And really appreciate your stop by. It's good seeing you. And give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time. That review is from 2014. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound... I'm doing good today. Thanks for asking. Not that, of course. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your... We'll just keep smashing okay, this button. Back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. Keep pushing Stanley, it. Yeah, we're gonna. Stanley, Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been twelve hours. <laughs> it's been twelve hours. You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're. Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh my goodness, I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week, or two weeks. Keep going. Oh, it's the years. No. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us. Are we in the future? <laughs> but they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the this human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a path. Yeah, he is starting to bug out. The end is never 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 the end Yeah, I think he's lost it. Is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the Or dude Oh jeez, what happened here? 
lapsed. It's probably been years, man. I think we're in the future. He's just gone at this point. <laughs> he gave up. Alright, let's just keep going. Can't stop, won't stop. I don't know what's happening anymore. We kind of just uh, exist here now. I can't push it no more. No, my button. We reached the end of the time. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, this game is nuts. I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? New, new content? Go we'll do this new, new content. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Isn't this the same thing we did? Yeah, this is supposed to be new, new content. Are we going to go to that circle again? You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe okay, this is different, turned actually. out to be. The original Stanley parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Oh? Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully fledged sequel. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Okay. Well, apparently, we're in the sequel. Calling I thought you got Stanley it Parable like a completely different way. It's so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long term franchising potential. <laughs> Guys, are wild. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. Oh, is this like a I little test version? If I can isn't the full thing? organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Hear your name in game. For okay. the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized so and confused. validated as people. <laughs> so with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button, which speaks the name of the person playing the game. It's isn't probably going to say Stanley, wonderful? isn't it? Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button I mean, will close. say your My name's name. Joe. Never name that Only two letters off. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the. All right, guys. My name's Jim now. Feature. Now, allow yourself to become Jim. Imagine yourself driving to work as Jim, playing frisbee on the weekends as Jim, 
staying up all night for a popcorn and horror movie sleepover as Jim, developing a crippling substance addiction as Jim, rediscovering yourself through fringe religious groups as Jim, and finally dying a slow death at an old age surrounded by members of your cult as Jim. Do you feel it in your soul? That's wild. Are you really, truly Jim right now? I if am so, Jim. Then please step forward and press the button. Jim. <laughs> yeah, so my name, guys. Yes, you see, what a thrill, what a rush. That was you. The button described you. Do it again, do it again. Jim. Ooh, it hits even harder the second <laughs> time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's That's take a nice. break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Jim. Whoa there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too Jim. much Jim. 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 I'm putting the Jim. gym button away. Jim. I no, soon no, no my button. Jim. My button. Jim. No. Jim. Jim. I hate you, narrator. Ruin my fun. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable 2. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Someday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? You want to click on the white one? All right. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually oh, really he picked the opposite one, apparently. Happy 12th birthday, step niece. My choice is. didn't matter. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Yeah, they got merch. Let's go check out their merch store. While you guys at it, I want to go check out my merch store too. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll thank you guys in advance. We got some really cool new uh, designs coming here soon. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical. That it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in the watch interview. What a good job. Well, hey, I appreciate that, Fair I'm Maid. I'm happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever My version will be out on Friday. Fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle Give me the bucket. of jarring cognitive Give dissonance me the bucket. while the bucket Give is me in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution. It's tomorrow's for Thursday. True. Only well, gotta wait like two days for the video. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? Does it now? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. <laughs> the benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Well, thanks. I guess. Does Thanks anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That I really suppose. should be an award if it isn't already. What's that achievement room that we've seen? Pull the lever, get your achievement? Yeah, sure, it's that easy. Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as I don't that. believe you, did. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not okay, a such a troll. Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans. You've seen Fried Rice and watch a stream. Been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen.
Okay. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? The collectibles. We'll do that now. Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game, and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. <laughs> yeah, so tragic. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the... Um, well, we'll figure that out later. Oh. That's literally it. Okay. Nice. There is no epilogue. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Forever? Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A standing awesome. forward for video games as a medium. Yeah, let's go fall forever to the end of time. Yeet. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Do we just keep going, or do we continue? Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Or sweat. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Yeah, I'll just keep waiting. See what happens. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? Ah, so it's not infinite. Okay, there is a bottom. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, oh, there you go. <laughs> well, good for you. You found the bottom of the Yay. hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look... I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. Oh, jeez. <sighs> then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Right, yeah, I'll go Great. back. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? Yeah, I think we're all good. But, uh, I appreciate everyone stopping by and hanging out today, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. Now, uh, please do hit that like button and subscribe if you guys haven't yet already. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. <laughs> okay, are you ready? The Stanley Parable 2. Oh? Uh, okay. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go, version two. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do Pretty very much. much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, 
insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. Like the bucket. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Oh. Okay. Let's begin the game, I guess. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ah, there's our lovely bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket. I thought the bucket gave me the ability to jump. Does it not? Stanley pressed the bucket upon every little thing in the office. Nothing responded to the bucket's touch, but it did little to discourage Stanley's belief in the magic of the bucket. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley hey, figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. Well, that's you fine, can't I guess. Buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows that's I've two tried. out of six. So I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Well, we didn't do this one yet. Let's go here. Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Ye oh, okay, I thought I was going to die and just restart. Guess that's not the case. Where am I? Oh, no more dangerous. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the Bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the Bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it Let's puts talk the mind smack and the bucket. soul at ease to embrace the Bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a Bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. Or not. <laughs> okay. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one Don't stood still above have it? the rest. It was a glorious no, bucket to behold. The bucket. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for nuts. his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? <laughs> That's hilarious. This game's too much, I swear. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. Okay. Is 
That's nuts. Okay. This game is nuts. But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. You can let me Let jump. Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. For